Let's pray and we get into the word today. Father, I thank you so much. And it is my great privilege and honor to stand before the people of God. You carved out this church and you are doing the work in it. Even though sometimes when I look at it from my perspective, I don't always see what I know you see. And so, Father, I ask you not to, you not going to change because you are eternally forever good. But, Lord, change me. Change my sight. Change my revelation. Change my ability to see into the realm of the spirit. And, Lord, and to see it for what it is, not for what it looks like. Father, I pray a word of encouragement over your people today. I speak strength and stamina to the tiredness and fatigue in their minds. I declare that the grace of God has come to them in such a prolific way that they never, ever have to go and walk and wander in the dark again. For the light has come, and the light has shined in darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. But these, your people, your beloved, your loved ones, can comprehend all things because they are filled with your spirit. Holy Spirit of God, we ask you now to invade this room right now. Push us aside for the sake of getting us into the place you want us to be. Move agendas, change hearts, change minds, and open eyes. Let our ears be open to what thus saith the Lord. I thank you for the expectation that only comes from you. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is of him. So I thank you for meeting us, Lord God, at the place of our faith today as a gathering of believers called out to do your work in the metropolitan area of Iowa City, Iowa and beyond, we say thank you, Lord, and amen. Can you say amen to that prayer? Amen. I, want to, I want to take an opportunity to say thank you, first of all. Thank you for uh, your generosity on last week. Uh, we weren't really, I found out, like, the day before that something was going on, and truly we've been so busy, I hadn't thought about, you know, growing up, I never knew there was a Pastor's Appreciation Month. I didn't know. I think I learned that when I got here. I don't know. Call me what you want. I just didn't know. But you didn't have to do it. I thank you for it. Each one of you. Thank you very much for being so kind and generous to us. We love it. We love you. Thank you so much. What a blessing you are. Give yourselves a hand. Would you do that? And I also want to encourage you to vote. Come on now. If you're not registered, you should be registered. If you're 18 and over and you can register to vote, you should be registered to vote. I, my vote doesn't count. Not until you lose. When you lose, you're going to realize, you know, I won't, I started to tell a joke, but that joke was from Eddie Murphy. And it's not appropriate for the Senate. Not much Brother Eddie says is appropriate for the Senate. But anyway, a long time ago, you know, but anyway, the gist of it was, oh, he won, you know? And so with that, it's our, it's our responsibility. It's one of our responsibilities, not just as a citizen of the United States, but as a kingdom citizen. Yeah. It is your responsibility to vote. Yeah. Don't be negligent in your responsibility. I'm going to tell you this, too. I heard Brother Copeland say this uh, some time ago, and it still rings true. If you, if you don't vote because you just, whatever your reason is, you know, unless you can't vote, that's a whole different thing. If you don't vote just because you decide not to go out, and if the wrong person gets put in office, you are held accountable for it. That's right. So... If, if, if that person decides they want to kill babies, guess what? You voted for them by not voting. Okay, I'll stop right there. Amen. 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 I know it's true. And y'all know I'm right. Amen? Amen? Come on now. But you got to vote, aren't you? Amen. You got to get out there. My wife and I voted, make sure we had to get our, our absentee ballots, and we got them in. Because we want to make sure we do our part for the kingdom. From there, it's in the hands of God. Amen. Amen. All right, I invite your careful attention to Galatians, the fourth chapter this morning. I'm going to talk about the overwhelming love, overwhelming love of God. And I'm going to do it in such a way that might not really come across as the title suggests, but that's what the Holy Spirit has laid on me. And so I want to expedite the time uh, here and get through. Would you give me 45 minutes, please? Um, overwhelming love. Galatians, the fourth chapter. We've been talking from Galatians for a while now. We're on the home stretch of Galatians and also on the home stretch of uh, learning the potential in every seed, which has been our theme for 2018. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And so with that being said, there's some things that we are now coming to a point of climax in, and the stage is now set for the conclusion of the book. Okay? That's important. The stage is now set for the conclusion of the writing to the Galatian church, and God is moving us to a place of revelation so we can understand why Paul sat down and wrote this letter. Okay? Look up at me for a minute as you hold your place there. Don't be guilty of doing this. Uh, I know we do, but I'm trying to, in this church, we're trying to educate you, not just make you happy. Okay? 
be, be aware that this book in its writing in its entirety is not in chronological order. Amen. Right. Okay? So when you read something, don't just clump it all together. Are you hearing me? Yes. Take the time. If you can, if you've got a good concordance, if you've got a good Bible, a good study Bible, learn the history, the date, the time, and the setting so you can understand. It's like, it's like the, 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 the Constitution of the United States when it was written. Well, if somebody is a first-time visitor to the United States and they don't know the history, they look at the document and think, well, that's a nice document, but the time of the writing was many years before we, you and I ever came into existence. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And so the context has to be understood in all of Scripture. So Paul begins to uh, outline this, and I'm going to read this. I'm going to start out by reading from the King James Version, and I'm going to start right at verse 4. One, just stay with me if you would, please. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing or is not different from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under, he is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under, under the elements of the world. Uh, make a note right here about verse 4 and come back here. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Say this with me. I am, I am adopted, adopted by, God. by God. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then heir, uh, an heir of God through Christ. I'm going to read this again. I'm going to read this from the, the, the uh, oh, that's the wrong version. I'm going to read this from the contemporary uh, English version for a second. It might help somebody if you're not familiar with the King James Version. But uh, Galatians 4 and verse 4. But when the time was right, God sent his son, and a woman gave birth to him. His son obeyed the law. Do you see that? His son obeyed the law. So he could set us free from the law, and we could become God's children. Without his obedience to the law, we, we don't get set free. Right. Come on now. Now, we also understand that Jesus fulfilled the law. He completely fulfilled the law. We've talked about that in the past. Let me keep going. Verse 5, he's, so he could set us free from the law, and we could become God's children. Verse 6, now that we are his children, now that we are his children, we're not trying to be his kids. We're not trying to be, you know, my, my family, I've said this before, my, my sons, you know, they are my, they're my family. They're not trying to be. Once we're born into God, into Christ, we become a part of his family. Now, there's, there's some things, as I pause right here for a second, there's some things and there's some people, you know, uh, it, with family members here, with family members present, uh, my brother, Apostle Walter, he and I were closer in age and proximity than the rest of my siblings, our siblings, okay? Now, that doesn't mean they're not my brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters, they're all older, you know. I'm younger than he is. Amen. <laughs> but, point being, point being, we've got older brothers and sisters too. Now, stay with me. In the body of Christ, when you come in, you might come in as a newborn and have older sisters and brothers. I don't say that they're not a part of my family because the newborn in the family has to have their, their you know, their, their self cleaned up because they can't do it themselves. If I am, if I've been in the family a long time, our oldest brother, JT, JT Jr., uh, his pastor's in Atlanta, uh, he and his wife, he has been, um, he's the oldest in our family by birth. Yes. So by birth, he might know more of the Roberts lineage than I do, because I'm 11 years behind him in learning. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. But he's still a part of the family. Amen. Now, he can't exclude me because I came in 11 years later, and I had to move him out mama's way. Uh -huh. Nor can he, because he's 15 months older than me. When I came in, they used to have this thing called the knee baby. Yeah. Some of y'all, I mean, you've ever heard that term? Maybe not. Okay. My mom was from the South, so she said, he the knee baby, I'm the baby. In other words, sitting on the knee. Uh, 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 anyway, but the knee baby had to get out of the way when the baby came in. Because, the, listen, the baby needed more care than the knee baby. So what happens is that older one, the older one, the oldest one of the siblings, you know, down the order, they have been granted by birth, they have, and by understanding, by living in the family, how to live successfully in the Roberts household. So they don't need as much attention as the new baby coming in. 
New babies got to be white. New babies got to be fed. New babies got to be cleaned up and dressed up and all those things. Isn't that right? So Paul here is writing, giving an illustration that we are all heirs of God. We have all been adopted by him, and he's given us the spirit of his son. Now, who is the spirit of his son? Who is the spirit? Holy Spirit, y'all got to slow on that, but that's okay, I'll show it to you in a minute. So let's keep reading here, I want you to understand this. So verse 6 says, now that we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, and his spirit tells us that God is our father. Right? Don't let anybody ever tell you, because of what they see you doing, that you are, God is not your father. I'm going to make sure I clean this up because I'm, I, I, I've been waiting to get here. So give me some latitude. Holy Spirit, help me get here. You know, what, what I recognize is that as an, an adopted son, I may not know all the regulations of the house. All right. All right. All right. But because God sent his spirit to me, what his spirit's going to do is he's going to take my thinking, according to Romans 12, and renew my thinking, yeah. and he's going to bring me to a place of maturity, and I start growing up under a little understanding and expand into greater revelation. Yeah. So as a, as a child coming in, I don't want my older brother telling me what I'm doing wrong. I'll stay right here for a minute. Because anyway, my older brother is not my dad. My older sister is not my mom. She my sister. Huh? He my brother. God, and we got the same bloodline flowing through us now. And because I come in and I, I you know, as, as a young upstart, I come in and I don't know nothing, but what you see me doing doesn't line up with what you have learned to do because you have been here longer than me. Oh. Does not disqualify God's love for me. Amen. His, well, his love is overwhelming. Huh? His, his, I was uh, talking to Kelsey in the, in the, in the meet and greet because I asked him, I know you've heard this song by Kim Walker Smith and Jesus Culture, Love Has a Name. It just makes my knees want to melt. Love has a name. Why you look at me like that? His name is Jesus. His name is Abba. His name is Father. Holy Spirit is love. So with that being said, I recognize that I don't have the same, and Paul is outlining this, these people that have come under his ministry and his teaching do not have all of it together. I wish I could get amen. You don't have it all together. <laughs> right? Because I don't have it all together. I certainly am not going to point the finger at somebody else who's just learning how to get it together. They're just learning how to get it together. How do they learn it? Because they accept Jesus as Lord and they come in and all the junk that was, was in the baggage that was in their life before they accepted Jesus is still there. And instead of me helping them carry the baggage, I want to criticize them for having it. Let's keep going. Y'all all right? So verse 7, he says, because he needs to get them to change their thinking and how they see themselves. You are no longer a slave. I love I, That song is beautiful. No longer a slave to sin. Right? You are God's children, and you will be given what he has promised. Now, with that being said, I'm going to skip down a little bit, because what happens is, go down to verse 9, what happens is, Paul is writing these things to a group of people, as I said before, who are simply in the, in the eyes of everybody else around, not qualified for God's love. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it pains me to have people in society, and I'm going to make it a little bit more specific, in Christian society, not this church, the other church, you know what I'm talking about, the one you left to come in. Because they didn't like you over there. You didn't have enough money to be there. Your education was lacking. You didn't have quite the pedigree to be able to be in leadership. Huh? They didn't like the fact that you've been married more than once. But see, with God, God don't care. I said, don't 
care. I didn't say he does not care. He doesn't care. Because what God is looking for is what's inside of a person. Not what's on the outside. Now let me be clear. He, it does not mean that what happens on the outside is irrelevant. Right? If you've got to allow the, the spirit of God that he says he gave us to come in and change us. But the change does not come from the outside in. Rather it comes from the inside out. I didn't know anything as the you know, born April 10th, 1962 in Geneva, New York. I knew nothing. I didn't even know I was born. Right, right. <laughs> I'm cool and looking cute and, you know, back then they had cloth diapers. Yuck. <laughs> and, and as a child, I was very, I was very sick. I had some, some sickness going on and, and had, so I had a bad accident happen to me at an early age with my arm. Some of you have seen the scars on my arm and that kind of stuff. But I didn't know. I didn't care either. Because I was a risk. I wasn't responsible for me. Yeah, yeah. Come on here. My parents were responsible yeah. for me. Right. Yeah. In on. the midst of whatever is going on in your life, you got to stop being so, I, I, I be so worried and full of care for it. God cares for you, the Bible says. Yeah. Oh. So what I didn't know, I didn't mean to know. But as I began to mature, this is what the law was in place over them, over the over the children of Israel for. Because without the law, there is no identification of sin. So now that we have identified sin, Paul says, now there has been sent a remedy for sin. His name is Jesus. And in Jesus, when I accept Jesus, listen to me, I accept the fullness of the remedy, even if it hasn't reached the very extremities of my body. Come on here. Come on here. Come on. Come on. I feel like. Uh -oh. yeah. Yes. Mm. Reach it. It's good stuff. <laughs> You know, if you're always allowed to get pulled up front, stand in front of them. If I take, listen to me, if I take a visual, this is a visual, you know, he's got the circulatory system in his entire body, you can get that, okay? But if I take some dye and pour it in his body, in his mouth, he takes it and drinks it, okay? It's not going to, stay with me now, it's not going to reach down here until it gets there. Yeah. Right. But the cure is already in it. Yeah. Oh, my God, my and it might take a while for it to reach the extremities. Yeah. It might take a while to affect his mind and his thinking. But the cure is already on board. Yeah. 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 So, so, so what I'm saying to you is that you, you come into a place, to a holy environment, Hallelujah. and you feel or people may try to make you feel like you're not worthy because you don't dance like they dance. Oh. You don't dress like they dress. Oh. Maybe you ain't got no rhythm, so you kind of like, they don't know how bad my rhythm is. I ain't moving. <laughs> but the cure is still on board. Yeah. So I, I as your, now listen, as your brother, as your brother, if we're in the same family, it's not my job to tell you what you're doing right or wrong. Yeah. It's my job to tell you about the lover of your soul who can take your wrong and turn it into a right. Yeah. Who can take your mistake and make it a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. But if you stop, if, 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 if all I do is tell you, you should never wear a purple tie. Yeah. I done lost him. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I don't think he want to be around me no more. What we've got to come to a place of understanding is that, the, and this is important because when we, when you know, the, the, the fifth chapter brings us to the fruit of the Spirit, but the overwhelming love of God, Paul did not cast the Gentiles aside that were doing dirty. Come on here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he did not condone their unrighteousness or their, their, their sin. Rather, he says that you have been redeemed. You, have, you, have, you were a slave. You are no longer a slave. Now, I have to tell you who you are and pronounce over you what you are so you can see the one who made you who and what you are. His name is Jesus. Once I can get you to see that, then everything else will fall into line. So, yes, you got stuff 
that hangs on you. You might have a lingering disease. You might have something that has just troubled you all your life. It might be in your family life. Whatever it is, but it cannot stay because you have the healer and the redeemer and the cure on board. And you can't get any more of him. Oh, I, I'm challenged by Apostle. I'm challenged by Christians who say, I want more of Jesus. How you gonna do that? How you gonna do that? So yeah, in the midst of what I'm struggling with, and I'm not telling you my struggle because I don't want to hear yours right now. I don't. Galatians 6 says, confess your faults one to another. Huh? So with, with that, I mean, uh, yeah, with that being said, I want you to understand that, that whatever's going on with me, there's only one person that can fix it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, my wife and I, we, we you know, she, we pick on each other. You can't be in the Tommy Roberts household very long unless you can take somebody picking on you. <laughs> and when we find out that you don't like to be picked on, <laughs> and our grandkids are good at it. <laughs> but sometimes the side stories help, okay? On, on Thursday night, I think it was Thursday night, we had uh, some of the grandkids over. <laughs> I've got that little Google Home Mini that somebody gave me. Now, I caught it to hear my voice. And Miss Autumn insists that it can hear her voice too. And so she didn't know it could. And I was trying, listen, I was trying not to let her get the revelation that it could. Because mm. <laughs> I know what she will do with revelation. <laughs> huh? They know where the candy's at in the house. They know where all the goodies and stuff. They, well, they got the revelation. She walked up to that thing. She walked up to that thing and said, first she said, Google. It didn't respond. I didn't help her not one bit. <laughs> I'm not one bit. She said, something else. Google, do this. It wasn't working. But then she remembered. Listen to me. She remembered that she had heard her grandpa or her papa say something that worked. <laughs> and when she remembered, she walked up to Google and said, hey, Google, play this song. And I'll be if it didn't crank up. <laughs> Most of us don't remember what our father has said. And because we don't remember what he said, we go out and try to make something happen the way we want to say. And you can't do that with God. It is not going to the Bible says, let him that is weak, yes. let him that is poor, say something. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you can't just say, well, you know, God sent me money. The weak have to say, I'm strong. Huh? The poor have to say, I'm rich. Hey. The sick have to say, I'm yeah. Yeah. Oh, And when you feel like you are defeated, you have to be able to say, I am more than because see that's how the family works amen let's keep going let's keep going verse 9 are you there but now after yet you have known God or rather are known of God how do you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements where you desire again to be in bondage let's read that from the contemporary English version again verse 9 says but now you know God or better still God knows you how can you turn back and become the slaves of those weak and pitiful powers? Do you not know that it literally surprises the devil when he defeats a Christian? He has no concept of that. Because as a believer, as a disciple, you don't have, you don't just have your strength to come to bear. That, that's one thing. I, I, I see my, my big brother, you know, Marco, big. I'm jealous. But I ain't put in the work he did. <laughs> you ain't saying that. <laughs> huh? So, 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 with that being said, don't be jealous when I walk in prosperity. Yeah. When my bills are paid. Yeah. Because you got to put in the work I put in. Amen. God is no respect to pray. He doesn't do it because I'm a preacher, Roger. You know that. Yeah. Isn't that right? So my point is, you've got to understand what God has done and what he's doing in you. He brings it to a place where you and I don't have to, we don't have to, uh, uh, um, uh, 
Bible says. We don't have to beg God to do anything that he's already done. Yes. Oh. Amen. When, when, when uh, uh, Autumn walked up to that Google Mini, she didn't ask my permission. <laughs> she in the house. Yeah. Oh. She part of the family. Yeah. She know, she know where Mimi and Papa's, I tell her, get, girl, get out of here. Get, 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 get. She just smiled a little cute self. You know? And, and, and I, I've had a saying in my, my house for years, while our kids were young, I don't reward disobedience. Mm. Yeah. I do not reward disobedience. Right. And I'm a firm believer that neither does God. Amen. No, man. No. No. I'm telling you something. And God will always start, listen, God will always start with the simple things for every move before he ever moves to something hard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Won't he? Yeah. When, when my kids, when you know, when you, those of you that have kids, you know, you didn't bring that baby home from the hospital, whatever the case is, and you know, you take it out. And back in back in our day, you know, some of you can remember this. They wouldn't even take the baby outdoors until it was like six weeks. Isn't that right? Six, seven weeks, whatever. Right? You know, I, that was what they did. But but you don't bring a baby in, and, and the baby is is there, and like little Miles. I mean, Miles my, is just now pulling himself up to try to crawl and scoop. But he he a funny little guy. But I don't expect Miles. You know, I don't watch Miles come in, and he he's got his his legs under him. He doesn't yet. But I'm using illustrations. And all of a sudden he falls. And I'm saying, what's wrong with this baby? What's wrong with him? He pooping on himself. What's wrong with him? We do it with Christians. Yes. Come on. She fell. What's wrong with her? Well, come on, preacher. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it's, it's got stuff coming all out. And clean yourself up. I, I didn't know I had it. Come on. Right. Come on. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, I, you know my, 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 one of my pet peeves is like, okay, all right, okay, all right, all right. I'll be able to this one. If I see something on your face, you know, like a little lip ball or something, I clean that up. Y'all got that right, okay? I ain't say none of this stuff. I said up here, okay? If I see something on your face, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to try to do it as discreet as possible. I'm going to hey, hey, you got something on your face. The ones I don't like are the ones who don't tell you. How many people have I listen? How many people have seen my weakness, but you saw it first? Yeah. And you didn't. You, as my family, you didn't take lift a finger wow. to help me get it off. Yeah. And then you got that group that like to broadcast your weakness. Mm -hmm. I had a, meeting, had a meeting with somebody yesterday. We had a meeting, uh, um, and we were talking to the person. The person said, "What I'm sharing with you, uh, I've never shared with anybody else. My wife was there." And. Uh, when they said it, I knew what they were meaning. Please don't tell anybody else. And I said, we still got to know each other a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Because they didn't know that I would never do that. Right. Mm. Yes. Right. Amen. It don't work. It don't work. It don't work for you to know something and go tell it. Right. It doesn't work. And so what you have to do, though, what you what you are supposed to do is come in and say, you know, in a, in a nice, cordial, stop being legalistic way. And I'm going to turn in just a minute because because the letter killeth, right. but the spirit gives life. So in the spirit of love, I'm going to say, That's all right here. Just, you really don't. OK, you're great. Perfect. Perfect. Amen. I don't care what y'all think. It's me. It's my vision and my sermon. <laughs> she hates when I do that, but, but I'm going to do it in the right context, right? Yeah. So this is what Paul's writing for the Galatians is. Why is he doing it this way? Because he's setting them up to let them know that there's fruit on the way. <laughs> there is fruit coming. Oh, would you lift your hand? Come on, lift your hands in the presence of the Lord and just say, Father, I receive the fruit. Come on, come on, say that. I mean, Father, I receive the fruit. I receive the fruit. The fruit is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I receive the fruit. You have to have the full measure of love on board. God help me. It starts with love. It ends with love. But you have to have I receive it today, Father. My faith, I, I receive it. It's mine. And if he can't get them over their own self-awareness and self-consciousness because everybody is running around telling them how bad they are, they will never receive the fruit. And without the fruit, you cannot reproduce. The seed is in the fruit, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You want love? You want to bound in love? You got to start sowing some love. Yeah. 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 Mama, ma. You going to have to walk up to somebody that you don't like and say, baby, God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. You may, ain't nobody talking about 
some, some emotional, physical love. I'm talking about spiritual agape, free-flowing love that comes from God. That's what pays the bills. That's what brings healing. That's what brings deliverance to people's lives. When I tell them I don't care what you look like, I don't care what you dress like, I love you because you are. You just are. But if he can't get this, if he can't get them beyond the, 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 the unworthiness, they've heard as the Galatian people, they've heard all their lives how terrible they are. And the only group that trumped them were the Corinthians. Mm. Mm. Despised by the Jews. Mm. My God. Oh, help me, Lord. I feel like that. Yeah. You know, it's one thing for a people group to be despised and, and totally put down all their lives. But it is another thing to take a message of hope and reconciliation to them because we are ministers of reconciliation and say to them, listen, I know that you're homeless right now. I know that you just came out of prison. I know that you've got a record longer than the Taj Mahal. But baby, God can use you. All you got to do is believe it. Yeah. And it is hard to get people to believe something that has been ingrained in them all of their lives. It is, it is the manifestation why women who are abused by a man keep running back to that thing. Because at least I know what he's going to bring me. I don't know what you're going to bring me, so I can't trust you. But I know that if I can walk lightly around them, I've learned it. And Christians have learned this Christianese, this, this stuff that we, that I don't believe is from God in any way, shape, or form. It has come down a pipeline of religiosity and legalism. And it has come to say that you are not worthy. I don't care what you do to try to be worthy. You are not worthy. And you try to keep laws and rituals and legalism. And it just will not work at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it will not pay the bills. Legalism will not get you healed. So rather than get into a position of faith and believe in God, i just rather accept your sickness and say, well, you know, God doesn't heal everybody. Jesus. Jesus. Straight out of hell, man. Straight out of hell. It is the spirit of Antichrist that comes and tells you, baby, God accepts you the moment you are. You believe. You didn't even open your mouth. You just believe. I don't know anything other than Jesus and him crucified, Paul said. I don't have anything to bring to God. I just believe. He knocked me down on the Damascus road. He raised me up. I couldn't see what I believed. Yeah. 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 Too many people need to see to believe. I'm telling you, belief comes before seeing. Yeah. Belief is more important than seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Would you do that? Yeah. I didn't intend to go there. Uh, let, let, turn over with me to uh, 2 Corinthians 3. I want to wrap this thing up. 2 Corinthians 3. Hondo. Thank you, Lord. Are you getting anything? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just, you know, I'm so Hallelujah. cognizant at this point in my life and aware of what God desires to do in this region. Yeah. And I don't have time. I'm going to say this in the best love, and, excuse me, faith statement that I can. I don't have time for people who will not grow up. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to love you. I'm going to preach to you. I'm going to continue to give you the word, but you've got to do some growing. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a, there is, it, it's as if there's a, there's a bottleneck in the system of Christianity. God will never come out on the losing end of this, of this, this whole plan of God. He's not going to lose, baby. He's not coming out short. I'm telling you what I know. He's looking for a body of believers, a church. If it's a church, so be it. If it's a group of congregations, so be it. But he's looking for a place where he can funnel a mass amount of people through the pipeline of righteousness, through the Lord Jesus Christ, coming straight through the door to the kingdom. But he's not going to send it where people are critical and people are always picking on people, talking about how bad they are. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. I wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't send my kid, send my child over to a daycare that, that, that let them run around and never paid attention to them. Yeah. Right. Living all kinds of ways, doing all kinds of things. I remember when our daughter and our babies were young, TJ and, 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 and Dominique were babies, and we took them over. I was in the Air Force. We were stationed in Langley, Hampton, Virginia. And we, she was always a stay-at-home mom, wanted to be home. And I wanted her there. That's why I felt like she needed to be. No offense to anybody. I'm just telling you, that's how I felt. And so, so in that one, she had, to, she had to go get a job. We needed the money, you know? And so we went and dropped our babies off at a, at a daycare. We vetted it, you know. Uh, back then, you didn't have the internet, so you had to go in there and check it out. Right. Need to do that anyway. Yeah. 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 And we came home, and our daughter was crying. Mm. I'm thinking, 
she wasn't crying when I dropped her off. Okay. Come on. What y'all do? Come on. And I had to, I had to restrain her because we wasn't born again then. That Anacostia Park came up out of her. DC in the house. I'm like, we're going to get this, baby. We're gonna get this. And rather than even go through the mix, we just said, you know what, give me my baby. Okay. It's my baby. It's our baby. So she stayed on. I believe God said, give me my children. Give me my babies. Ooh. If you don't know how to treat them, I'm sitting somewhere with somebody can walk. Yeah. We can talk a good game all we want to, but how we act when somebody walk through the door. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on now. Woo. We, 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 it's good. It's easy for us to pick up on the egregious sin. Uh, yeah. Better teach you. I can see no sin, so I'm calling you out. They ain't your child. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be real transparent. I, I don't know how I got here, but I'm here now, and I'm going to stay here so we can go on at home. Okay. I love my kids. I have not, it, it, Back in the day when we were kids, the whole church could correct us. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 And did. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. did. Yeah. Mom and daddy, everybody that know how I'm living, where I'm walking right now, you know what I'm talking Mom and daddy, and mom and daddy weren't going to say a word to them. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Because they understood that the church understood who they were yeah. and what their authority was over all of the children. You've heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. But not, the Bible says, raise up a child, train up a child in the way that they should go. Yes. Okay? But if you going to train my child, your life better be right before you say something to my child. Don't you, don't you utter a word if your life ain't right. Well, my life is right. Not with an attitude like that in anything. And I believe God, I, I believe it. I just believe God just, you know what? Enough. Enough. I got all these people out here going to hell. They're going to hell. And I can't find a church that is equipped and mature enough to be able to accept anybody, no matter how they come in the door. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to tell you something else. They ain't coming until you go out and fight. They ain't coming because they're watching this video. They're not. They are coming when the overwhelming love of God is in your and my heart. Yeah. Mm. Look, I ain't trying to have church with nobody. I ain't trying to have church with an empty, empty, empty. Yes, yes. I'm going to come down this line in a minute. I ain't trying to have church with nobody in it. Later for that. I got a t-shirt. We did that in Fort Worth. And I preached to one like I preached to a thousand. You better know that. But I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. There's more people out here trying to get in than what we are even beginning to tap into. But most of it has come to the point where we have become accustomed. Uh, we just raise up in the family and figure that if it's for me, I'll get it. Yeah, yeah. But you have to be willing, like the prodigal son and the brother. The, I'm going to harp on the brother for a minute. She called on the brother a few weeks ago. The brother was in the house and had all of the possessions, but he got mad when somebody else came in. The, the other son came back and daddy threw a party. I'm telling you that the Holy Ghost wants to throw a party for all these blood ones out here walking around. And I'm, I'm going to do my level best, God. You give me strategy, I'll bring them in. We're building buildings to bring them in. Yeah. I'm not building a building. We're not building a building just to have church. Yeah. I can do this at home. Yeah. Hey. I don't need y'all to preach too, baby. I have to go if I have to close the bathroom door because I might be, she might be the thing I need to preach about. So I close the bathroom door. She go in her bathroom. She closed the door. She up there rejoicing. I'm up there preaching. 
verse 16. <clears throat> Nevertheless, yes, yeah, yeah. When it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Has the veil been taken away? Yeah. Okay, we know that. Verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, yeah. and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that liberty, I'm going to read it from the contemporary English version, says the Lord and the Spirit are one and the same. And the Lord's Spirit sets us free. Turn, turn with me over to Romans 8 real quick. Turn to Romans 8. Are you all right? Yes. My wife and I are, are, have been blessed to be invited to do a three-day leadership conference. Um, as the key speaker, yeah, I'm honored, you know. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell them, see, see what, you, what you don't see, other people see. Yeah. You know, it's, it's easy to be in this Petri dish called Life Point. I would sit here and think, well, you know, it's dark here. It's, it's too this or too that, too liberal, too whatever. And it is. But you know what? It's liberal everywhere. Yeah. It's dark everywhere. Yeah. The darkness is pushing now. It has to because the light, the light, when the light just shines, it doesn't have to be bright. Any light will dispel darkness. <laughs> and so what the devil does is he tries to keep us focused on the darkness more than the light. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And if we just go be a light, mm -hmm. the darkness would acknowledge our, our, our authority and then we would have something to share to people that they could receive because we do it in love. Yeah. But when we close off our own light, our light becomes dim or doesn't, doesn't the batteries are weak. And then we go out and try to give a message. See, see, a, a message of grace with no truth is empty. Let me say that again. A message of grace, grace, the unmerited favor of God, however you want to call it, grace, the overwhelming desire of God to treat you and I like sin never happened. That message without love or without truth, rather, is empty. You got to tell people the truth. But you got to do it in love. Yeah. And, and truth without grace or truth without love is mean. It comes across evil. Yeah. And the yeah. devil likes that. Yeah. So, so you turn to Romans 8, right? Yeah. Yeah. Romans 8. Let me see where I'm going to start real quick here. Verse 14. Thank you, Lord. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. This is important. Now, this is this is... Again, when I talked to you in the beginning about how not to, not to take the Bible and lump it all together, but rather to read it in the context. Now, what Paul has done is he's told the Romans this. He's told the Corinthians this. He's actually told everybody the same message, but he's had to tell it to them in different ways because they were different churches at different levels. Mm -hmm. yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. So when he says this, it's not redundancy. It is actually confirmation of what he said. But he couldn't tell the Galatians this right now. And I don't think I'm going to get far enough into it. But he couldn't tell them because they weren't ready to receive it. Mm. Remember how he started out? That when we read, it said that God in the fullness of time. Mm. One translation says when it was the right time. God has a right time for you and I. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It is the truth. And many people, many people move before it's their right time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's like it's like marrying somebody instead of, instead of going on a courtship. I know that's an old dated word. Um, or, or or spending time to get to know one another. You like what you see. They like what they see, and y'all go get married. But. There's more to marriage than the bedroom. Yeah. I'm keeping this up here now. Because when the honey dries up and the moon don't rise, see everybody that has everybody that's either been married is married or one they're laughing now. And when when, look, 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 look. when stuff done. When Barry begins to hit things that, listen to me now, listen to me, what happens is, then you want to do over. And then it's like, why did I do this thing? Listen to me. Because it was not the season or the time. And the Bible says that God will not release Jesus until it is the fullness of time. And we are we are rapidly approaching. I, I know some of y'all are not really comprehending, but 
the Spirit of the Lord will give it to you. I'm telling you that the, that the, the indicators and the, the, the prophetic signs and the prophetic road markers are well in place now. The fullness of time is fast approaching if we're not already living in it. Amen. Jesus is soon to come. Amen. And you will have wanted to wait for your time. Everybody has an appointed time. Yes. Verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby, once again we see the same thing, right? We cry, Daddy, Abba, Father. The spirit itself, bad translation there, should say himself. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are not trying to be not going to be. We are the children of God. And in children, then we are heirs. Isn't that right? Amen. Let me take you to one more place and I'll let you go. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 3. I'm going to let you go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. That was it. Pastor, that. that was it. That was it. Yeah. She and I had this thing we were trying to sort out. Yeah. Verse 3. My brother. Now, let me, let me read this from the contemporary news version. You got it? Verse 1. Verse 1. My friends, you are acting like the people of this world. Now, let's be clear. Let's be clear. He ain't talking to sinners. That's right. He ain't talking to sinners. No. No. If there is, yes, he is. If there has ever been an age, I can't say what it was like in the 70s. I was just a teenager. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't in the church feeling anything. But if there's ever been an age when the, when the church is being pressed to lose its identity, yeah. it is not. Yeah. It is absolutely not. When you start, when people start taking things from you that God has given to you, that's called the, the, the blessing, by the way. That, that gift of the Spirit of God, the Son of, this gift of the Son, Jesus, that is the blessing. It is the empowerment that came on Abraham, or Abram, if you will, before Jesus even showed up and manifested in the earth. That's a whole different lesson. But you know how, you know how Abram activated it? Romans 4. I'm going to turn there, just right now. That's how Abraham, Abraham, the Bible says, the God that quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Abraham did the same thing. Yeah. And it activated, we read it earlier, we, it activated life and success in him. Yes. But what happens now is that what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to steal human from the church. Mm. Yeah. 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 Done a pretty good job of that yeah. for some people. Mm. He's, he's, he's endeavored to steal the Holy Spirit from the church and keep you from manifesting the gift of tongues. Yeah. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you ever had somebody steal something from you? Yes. Steal something from you? It was yours. You paid for it. In this case, you didn't have to pay for it. Jesus paid for it. Come on. Yeah. And somebody tried to steal it from you. Mm. Allowing, allowing uh, lesbians and homosexuals to stand in the pulpit and teach the word. Yeah. I wouldn't do that no more than I'd let a liar stand up here. Mm. Right. Or a thief. Come on. You beat your wife as a man, you beat your husband as a woman, you stand up here to preach you wrong. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Ain't no difference. Absolutely. Ain't no difference. We're glory to God. Yes. So what we have to do is we have to stop acting like the world. He goes on to say, uh, that's why I could not speak to you as spiritual people. You are like babies as far as your faith in Christ is concerned. In other words, your faith is under development. Mm -hmm. right. I remember when we came here, there wasn't a whole lot of faith being spoken, and some, some, some people were still challenged by faith. But I really, but I, but I got the flu. The God that quickeneth the dead, the God that killeth the flu, and calleth you healed. I can say the same thing, same principle. But I have the flu. The God that killeth the flu. I didn't say the, 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 the uh, flu shot that killeth the flu. No. No, don't, don't even go there with me. You can take your flu shot all you want to. I don't care. I can care less what you do. You ain't asking me anyway. So what, was, what, I, what I think matters. The God that killeth the flu. Because if he don't kill the flu, he can't quicken the dead. Yeah. 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 But they don't want you to be healed. They want you to be sick. So you can be dependent upon that big old thing up there. And I'm not talking it. If we didn't have that, a lot of people would be dead. We got nurses in here now. Doctors in here now. So thank God it's there. But then it, 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 ain't, it ain't got to be there for me. Amen. Amen. Your faith in Christ is concerned. So I had to treat you like babies and feed you milk. 
food and you still cannot, he says. Now he's talking to the Corinthians now, right? Because you are not yet spiritual. Let me read this first three from, from First Corinthians, and I'm, I'm from King James, and I'm quoting this. You are not, for you are yet carnal. Do you know what the word carnal means? It means worldly. It actually means, we get our word carnivorous from it. The root word is carny. But it means meat eater, fleshly, fleshly, devouring things. So it says here, for you are yet carnal. In other words, you still are moved by your feelings. You don't know what they did to me. Close your Bible. You know what they did to me? You're right. I don't know. And dare I say, <coughs> excuse me. Pardon me. <coughs> Is the car running? Is the car running? Dare I say, I don't care. No matter what they did to you, it doesn't negate the overwhelming love of God. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I have had opportunities to be offended yeah. out the yin yang of Yes. <laughs> I have to be careful what I say because you know people say, I don't want to bring myself a person to a church where you use such language. Don't bring it. <laughs> There's other churches out there that don't use that kind of language. There's other churches out there that don't preach the gospel. So take it. Gonna make your life better Amen. if you if you believe it, you receive it. But but if I've got to if I've got to be constantly concerned about how you feel about the message, and I'm gonna tell you, I mean I know I've got associates, you know I I didn't say friends, I said associates. That's that's how they craft their messages to make sure that the people don't feel offended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, the, the reality of it is I've had people say things to me in the street that that were more offensive than I'm gonna ever hear in the church. Amen. And I didn't get mad. Why we get mad in the church? Because we act like the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what do you don't know what he said? You don't know what he did. At some point you're going to get over it. Yeah. 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 If you're going to be blessed. Yeah. 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 Right, let me finish this, the passage and I'm, I'm done. So, so I had to treat you like babies, feed you milk. You could not take solid food and you still cannot because you're not your spiritual. You're jealous. Mm -hmm. uh, Jealous <laughs> and argue with each other. This proves that you are not spiritual and that you are acting like the people of the world. Oh man! Then they started getting into this thing. But I'm of this camp. I'm of Paul. I'm of Paulus. You know. And Paul broke it down to him so tough, man. He said, "Listen, ain't none of us nothing but dirt bags." Right. Glorified by God's power. Yeah. <laughs> you following me, you're really following God, whether you know it or not. Right. Yes. Yeah. And if God were here Himself, listen, y'all know the deal. You know, oh God, we want you to come down. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you might think you do. <laughs> you might think you do. It sounds real spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> until God shows up. <laughs> and you who said I will never go down. Uh -oh. We watching you on the floor, rolling around like some holy roller, because the power of God showed up. God, come on, He already did come. He's already here. Amen. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> My Father, I give you praise. Come on, just open your hearts. Father, Abba, we love you. We thank you. Wow. Your presence overwhelms us. Your love never ends. Even in eternity, to eternity's eternity, it will never end. We thank you that you have shed your love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Your grace is overwhelming towards us. I heard this some time ago in the lyrics of the song, your, your grace is greater than my sin. Sin will not be eternal, but grace is. Sin has a life shelf life to it and an expiration date, but grace will never end. 
Okay. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love, Master. Thank you for your love, Master. The love. Turn your turn music down for me. Your love that causes you to reach out with a hand of healing. Right where you sit. Right where you sit. I want you to take your hand. And I just want to lay it. I want you to lay it on your body. Come on now. Lay it on your body. I'm going to tell you, let me give you a short revelation. You don't even have to be sick to need healing. You can live in a perpetual state of health and never know what a doctor's bill looks like. So, Father, I lay my hands on myself as the prophet of my life. And I say, be healed. Come on. Be healed. Uh, you're not the sick. You're not the sick. You're the healed and the devil's trying to make you sick. But you don't have to receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to take, 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 your, if you take your wallet out. Uh, I'm just doing this at the direction I'm going. Take your wallet out or, or your purse or you can just hold your handbag, whatever. Whether you got money in it or not is important. Because if you don't have money in it, you need money in it. And I guarantee you, you need more money than you got right now. Amen. Yeah. I hear the Lord. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen me do this before. I'm just telling you what I hear the Lord say. And I want you to take your wallet, that purse, chain, coin purse, whatever you got. And I want you to lay your hands on it. And I ain't going to ask you to pull nothing out of it, so don't, don't be concerned. <laughs> I just want you to be obedient. Thank you, Father. I'm listening, Father. I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. I'm listening. Come on, are you listening? Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Thank you, Father. I am so convinced that I hear God right now. If there's anybody in here that does not, and you don't have to, you don't have to move pride and all that stupid stuff away, that's stupid stuff. Okay. If you don't have any money on you in your purse, everybody bow your heads. Everybody bow your heads, close your eyes. If you don't have any money on you right now, or you don't have anything in your purse, would you lift your hand up for me, please? Why don't you lift your hand up? Why don't you lift your hand up? Come here, quick, 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 quick. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Give, give, make sure everybody's got something. I don't care, the amount doesn't matter, but the obedience to God does. Make sure everybody's got something. Everybody, make sure everybody has something. Keep, hand Keep your hands up, please. Keep, Keep your hands up. up. Keep your hands up. Keep hands up. Don't talk, don't talk. Just find their hand, put something in your hand, just, put, just wrap it in their hand, let them close their hand. Just close your hand around. Just close your hand around. Just close your hand around. I don't care about the amount. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. It's yours to keep. But this does matter. I hear the Lord say it, and we're going to do it. Thank you, Lord. Everybody. Everybody. Anybody else? Anybody else? Everybody have something in their hand. Everybody has something in their hand. Now, here's what. Here's what. We got everybody. We got everybody. Okay. All right. I want you to say this after me. I am. I am. Your child. Your, your child. child. Abba. Abba. You love me. You love me. You love all of me. You love all of me. You love my physical body. You love my physical body. You love my, body. You love my mental acuteness. You love my mental acuteness. You love my intelligence. You love my intelligence. You love my imagination. You love my imagination. You love my family. You love my family. And you love my money. And you love my money. I say. I say. Money. Money. money come. Come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen to me. Money. 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 Say it like I say it, with authority. Yeah. Money. Money. Come. Come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The last one's going to be a little, little bit different, but you want to say it with authority. Money. Money. Come. Come. To me. To me. Right. Right. Now. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm here to tell you. You can look up at me. I'm finished. There are many of you. Many of you that will have a testimony this coming week. Amen. Amen. Listen, Amen. that God, as a result of you trusting him by faith, he's going to bring something to you financially that you need and you were not expecting. Amen. Amen. I know it's true. I, I know it's true. I you don't have to believe it. What if it doesn't come? That's not your concern. That's not my concern. Yes. But for those of you that can believe and receive, yes. it's coming. Yes. 
Uh, yeah. See? Last example, I was, we were getting ready. We were packing last night. Give me a microphone, please. We were packing last night, and uh, I went into my office. I hadn't spent much time there this week because I've been so challenged time-wise. And um, there was a company that my wife and I, thank you, my wife and I actually uh, owe money to. And we've been believing to be debt-free. I mean, you know, I, I, I just completely debt-free. Somebody asked me if I wanted to uh, do something that was, you know, in terms of making a purchase thereabouts. It was about $150,000 or something like that. I said, not if I got to do it in debt. I'm trying to come out. I ain't going in. And so I was in my office, and I had a, had a little letter. I hadn't, you know, because we had a meeting. We had several meetings yesterday, so I hadn't really, I just stacked the mail up in my office. And so I, I, like last night, Holy Spirit, I was in there, and he said, look at this. Because I wasn't going to look at it. I was just going to set it to the side and deal with it when I got back off the road. And I, and I heard him enough. He was insistent about, look at it. You know, he did it in love, but he was pretty insistent. So I, you know, <laughs> I thought, because it was from the company I owed money to. I thought it was a bill. So I wasn't going to look at it. That's why he told me, look at it. Now I got to know his voice. And so, I, you know, you know the little the perforations on the side, you know. That's usually the sound of the bill. In my house, I don't know about yours, but my house. Okay. I opened that door, and I couldn't believe what I saw. Well, I guess I couldn't because I don't believe it. But I was surprised by what I saw. There it is. And so I took, I, I, I walked out, it was late too, it was like 12 o'clock or something, I don't know, we had 10 o'clock back right now. And I walked in there and she was doing some studying, that's what she does, still at that hour. And I laid it on her lap and I said, look at that, because it was in her name. And it was a check for money. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Get the Lord a hand of 